Welcome to this video that is going to talk about the accounting information that we are going to be using inside our organisation. There are two topics that we will be covering here. We will talk about CSFs and we will talk about KPIs, both of which are terms that should be familiar to you, although obviously I will go through them again. First of all then, CSFs. As you are all aware, a CSF is a critical success factor. One of the things that we are thinking about in P5 is what strategy we are following at the moment and what will we need to do well in order to succeed at that strategy. Now, that will obviously depend on a number of different things. So the things you need to be good at will be very different if you are a company that publishes newspapers or if you are a company that manufactures luxury cars. So the first thing that we need to think about in a question where we have to interpret any figures is what successful things will need to be done. So again, what is critical to their success? Now, the thing is that obviously depends on the industry. We've just said that. But it also depends on the generic strategy that you are following. Now, you should remember generic strategies from paper P3. So taking the example of a car manufacturer, what do you need to be good at if you are manufacturing luxury cars might be very different to what do you have to be good at if you manufacture a fairly basic mass production vehicle. Now, even though they're both car manufacturers, there'll be certain things that they will do the same, but there'll be a lot of things that they do differently. I would imagine that if you're mass producing a car, you need to keep the costs down. Whereas if you're producing a few of a luxury car, so you're not going to produce very many of them, but they're going to be very expensive. Cost control probably isn't as much of an issue, but other things will be instead. So whenever you are asked to look at a question where you have to interpret some figures, think about what the critical success factors would be in that industry for that particular strategy. Because then we have an idea of what the question is all about. But we also have KPIs, key performance indicators. How do you know if you are going to meet your critical success factors? Now, the trouble with most critical success factors is it's very difficult to actually know whether you're doing a good job or not. Imagine you're an accountancy college. You're running an accountancy college. You are my boss. You are my manager. And you have said one of our critical success factors is having very, very good quality. Now, that's quite a difficult thing to know whether you are delivering a very good quality. I am recording this video in a studio. I don't know where you are watching and listening to it. I don't know where you are. So how do I know if the quality is good? How do I know if the quality is what you are expecting? So the problem with many critical success factors is we don't necessarily know how we're doing, which is where KPIs come in. KPIs, key performance indicators, are numbers that we can use to tell whether we are meeting our critical success factors. Now, hopefully, one of the things that you can do with this video would be to watch it and see if you think it's any good. If we get lots of complaints about this video, we can record the number of them. Hopefully, it will be very low. But if there are a lot of complaints, my boss can come to me and say, look, there have been 97,213 complaints about this video. That is a number that proves there is a problem. So we need to have appropriate key performance indicators. One of the things that you might do as a college is you might have some promotional material, maybe some promotional videos that are placed on the Internet. Now, what happens if students think those videos are good? They will then sign up for courses and you can measure how many people do that. If the videos are not particularly helpful, students will not sign up for those courses. And again, the numbers will prove that. So you can use numbers 
to tell you how you are doing. You can use numbers to tell whether the material you've got, the car you're making, the news storage you print in your newspaper, you can use numbers to say, are we actually doing a good job or not? And that's incredibly important in a company, because after all, if you have identified something as a critical success factor and you are not being successful, surely you need to know that as soon as possible so that you can fix it. And that's what key performance indicators do. They tell you what to measure. And once you start collecting numbers, you can see we are doing well or you can see we are doing badly and we have a problem that needs fixing. Now, you can see once we have got some numbers, we can compare them with something else. We could compare them with what happened last year to see if we're getting better or worse. We could compare them with budgets to see if we've met our budget or not. We could compare them with others. We might have. 90% of our students coming back because they like because they like the courses and you might think we're doing really well if another college has 95% well actually maybe we're not so it might also be useful to compare yourself with others so in summary CSFs are linked to KPIs in the exam you often have to suggest key performance indicators what should this company measure the best way to do it is to think what must they get right, what they mu what must they be successful at, and then what numbers could you calculate to show whether you're doing that or not. So it's a fairly common exam question. When it comes up, it's usually worth about six marks. But the good thing is there is nothing to learn. It's simply common sense. What would this company in this situation have to measure?